On this special day for ComArts, as well as America, we are re-inaugurating Ms. Philipson and Mr. Brown as they renew their oath as co-hosts of this show. Since we couldn't find a Bible and since they're both Scientologists, we're having them swear on this copy of the director's notes. Mr. Brown. I, Brian Marie Brown, <laughs> do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the role of Beaumont host and will, to the best of my ability, maintain my role as the hot one, so help me God. I, Katie Ann Philipson, also solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the role of Beaumont host, even better than my counterpart, and will, to the best of my ability, continue to be the main source of Albies for this show, so help me pay her. From Studio E at Michigan State University, it's the Beaumont Bulletin. Good evening, I'm Brian Brown. And I'm Katie Phillipson. Jimmy Fallon hosted the Golden Globes on January 8th. I didn't watch, but I assume A-listers were forced to play charades for three hours while the Roots pretended to tolerate this nonsense. The television show Scandal returns to ABC next week with a new season full of government corruption, lies, and manipulation. To catch the documentary version of Scandal, just take a good look around. In sports news, the college football playoff national championship was hosted in Tampa, Florida earlier this month. Now that the season was over, we decided to take Sparty out back and put the poor guy out of his misery. And NFL draft prospects across the country are having to change their identity for fear of further pursuit from the Browns front office. In entertainment, it was reported that on December 20th, Katherine Heigl and her husband welcomed a new child. Hey, they should make a shitty Katherine Heigl movie about this. Over the holidays, Carrie Fisher died. She was reportedly strangled by her own bra while bathed in moonlight, and after being cremated, her ashes were put in a Prozac pill-shaped container. The funny thing about this is that only one of these things is false. CNN reports that white nationalist groups have already begun to lose faith in the president. I don't know what they were looking for at this whole time, though. He's always seemed pretty orange to me. A trailer full of marbles detached from a semi-truck last weekend near Indianapolis, spilling thousands of pounds of marbles on the freeway. Meanwhile, every dad in America had a grand time making puns about how the truck driver must have lost his marbles. <laughs> lost his marbles. <laughs> Moving along, cemetery workers in England reported a rumbling below the surface at Oxfordshire Cemetery. No worries, though. Reports say it was just George Orwell rolling in his grave after alternative facts became a thing. On that note, Katie and I would like to share some alternative facts of ours here today. For example, our show brings people together by sparking open-minded and respectful conversations about politics. Donald Trump isn't naturally orange. He's just in a reverse Rachel Dolezal situation. Betsy DeVos wants guns in schools not to protect against grizzly bears, but so public schools can offer more options to students after high school. Either go to college, get a job, or kill yourself. Shonda Rhimes is not making any more shows. La La Land wasn't even that good. Okay, that one's just a lie. It was great. Corinne from The Bachelor will go on to lead a long, successful life. I'm happy. Uh... For more alternative facts, we will go to the Beaumont Bulletin's press secretary, Sam Cinnamon, who is fielding questions from the fake news right now. All right, let's get this puppy started. First question. Is it true? Not answering that one. Next question. Nancy Nutmeg, can you comment on the temporary ban on comedy that's going into effect? This ban on comedy is for everybody's safety, period. I will send in the feds if I don't see things change. I don't wanna hear laughter. I don't wanna see smiles. The inner cities are killing each other over comedy. Next question. Hi, Bart Basil. Is it true that Brian Brown can't read? What, what, no, no, that is that is not true. And you know what? I dare you to show me any piece of evidence that proves otherwise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Uh, can you read what's on the prompter? No. Just make sure that it's... Literally, no. Next question. Hi, Candace Cummins. What is your opinion on voter fraud at the Albies? The Albies are rigged. End of story. You've got people sign up for two, 
three Facebook groups, multiple shows. What's next? You have the same guy as head writer for two shows? I'll be doing a full investigation shortly. All right, I think it's time to put this puppy down. Last question. Can you state categorically that? That's a bad question. I'm not answering that. It looks like that's all we have time for today, folks. Uh, I think I gotta go catch a new episode of Turn. So we'll do this again at noon tomorrow. Welcome back. With Paris's anti-pollution initiative and Donald Trump's attack on the EPA, foreign countries are now advertising prime real estate to make money off the American refugees they will soon have flooding in. Here to talk about the first few days of the Trump administration is EPA worker Chris Pine. No way! She's right here. Cool it, groupie. Hey guys, I'm glad to be here, especially since dialogue is so intrinsic to our political process. Exactly. So Chris, loved you in Star Trek, but a lot of environmental groups are concerned about Trump's proposed environmental policies. Do you think his administration will worsen the effects of global warming? I can't comment on that. Um, all right, global warming aside, do you think he'll hurt the environment? I can't comment on that. Is climate change real? Who's to say? The EPA. Oh, <laughs> well, we're uh, busy right now. Please leave a message. Chris, you're clearly not busy. You're right here. What can you tell us? The Trump administration is committed to the environment. President Trump loves trees and animals and all that other nature shit, but he would like to add that there is no animal bigger or more manly than himself. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Well, that's all for this episode of the Beaumont Bulletin. I'm Brian Brown. And I'm dead inside. Insert hopeful slogan here. Thank you.